Good day, fellow investors. We just discussed how the S&P 500 is pure speculation when it comes to investing. And that is because the historical price earnings ratio is very high. If you look at history, high P ratio means low returns. And then if you invest in the S&P 500, you speculate that things will not change and that things will never go back to P ratios of 10, 20 that were the historical norm. So you say interest rates will go lower and therefore this is the new normal. But to me, that is too risky because we are in the current environment now with a high price earnings ratio, but what if it goes back to 15, that is the historical average, or even without the last 20 years, 30 years of extremely low interest rates and low inflation, if it goes even lower, that's a 50% decline for the S&P 500. And if you look at the historical return of stocks, P ratio before the 2000s of 12, 8% earnings yield, 2% growth, that is the historical 10% that stocks delivered. Now, with a P ratio of 22, you cannot expect this. And therefore, this is not investing, this is speculating on the environment remaining as is. If you can predict the future, well, send me an email, let me know, because I also want to know the future. But I unfortunately cannot predict the future, cannot predict interest rates, and therefore I can all just discuss scenarios and then see, okay, how would what fit me? So if I have an investment of 1 million, the dividend yield in the market is now 1.6%, and I'm just thinking, if things turn, it can easily halve in 4-5 or five years, and the 16,000 dividend won't help much in that environment. So I want to give a message of what real investing is, not speculating on the market. We discussed Amsterdam commodities and let's dig deeper on how scenarios there impact investing without caring about the market. So the current dividend is 1.25 euros for a 5.6 dividend yield, which is already a little bit higher than the markets. And this is the historical dividend. You can see it has grown over time. There were some bad years, some declining years, but that is owning businesses. And if you had invested 15 years ago, then the million would now give you 200,000 per year in dividends. And that's already something that whatever the market had done, 200,000 on your million would allow you a good life. That is investing. Of course, you would have a few years where you would not go to your world trip or something like that, but you just pause, you get something and you wait for better times. That is investing. And if you just look at the company, you can see that it is a dividend payer. When they make an acquisition, they pay that first, then they increase the dividend thanks to the cash flow of that acquisitions. And now the question when it comes to owning businesses, dividends, at what price does this business fit you? Let's continue with scenario thinking. So I've took the next 10 years and then I've made a scenario where this is the current dividend and let's say it grows a little bit. Then we have again an earnings recession, an acquisition or something which is normal for life and businesses. And then we're back to normal and 10 years from now, the dividend is, let's say, 2 euros per share. This is normal when it comes to investing. You have to survive the bad times that will certainly come. But if you look at 10 years down the road, if the dividend is 2 euros, if the market is happy with 5%, the stock will be at 40. The stock is now at 22. That's around 6 7% per year plus the 5% dividends per year. That's a 12% long-term return yearly. So that's something you can calculate. But you also have to accept the volatility. But when you own good businesses, this volatility is just temporary. So we have to try to own businesses, accept volatility, know that 
ugly things can happen temporarily. And if we own the right businesses, that is, as I said, temporarily. But most people have trouble with this and therefore they don't get to great returns because most people want to know about crashes and are focused on the short term, not the long term. What do I mean by accumulating wealth over the long term versus speculating? If you have a mind of short term investing, you are focused on what will the market do? What is the P ratio? Where will interest rates go? What will the Fed fart? politics, uh, recessions, exuberance, my neighbor is getting rich on Bitcoin. And if you check YouTube, most of the content is about this. This is the focus and therefore people miss real investing, investing beyond a decade. So the focus is you have to end up well, no matter what, chip by chip, dividend by dividend, I have more wealth, which allows for the compounding effect slow and steady. If a crash happens, that's the opportunity of a lifetime to buy more. And that is investing versus speculating. I can guarantee you that recessions will come, crashes will come, anything will happen. The key is your behavior. Because if you just look at what the average investor did compared to what the market did, you can see that this speculation costs three and a half percentage points per year, which is a complete disaster for most people. If you do the opposite, you will do much, much better, enjoy your compounding wealth and enjoy investing. So forget about the stock market. I know it's so hard not to look at that stock prices, but look at the business and what you own, the dividends, forget about the market and you will compound at great, better than market rates. If there is volatility, if there are crashes, you take advantage of that. And that is pure investing without speculating what will happen. If you want to check how I do that, check my research platform, check the Amsterdam Commodities video, and I'll see you in the next video.